And for all of you that didn't hear that, that was a Glenn Miller song. <laughs> um, they did this thing called a maxi single in the UK. They put two songs on each side of the um, 78 and called it a maxi single. And of course, besides having Moonlight Serenade and American Patrol, it also had the Little Brown Jug on the other side, which we're going to do a little later in the program. Uh, next, we're going to do a Leroy Anderson piece called Sleigh Ride. It's not a lot in the holidays. Um, ironically, he composed it during a heat wave in July 1946, uh, all instrumentals. Uh, Mike Parrish added some lyrics in the 1950s about various winter activities. I don't think we've ever sung it here, but we've played it in the past, and you can look forward to that in our Christmas program, not to ruin any surprises there. But uh, originally recorded on red vinyl, very interesting. Uh, recorded also by names like John Williams and the Ronettes, and even recently Gwen Stefan. Uh, Leroy wrote for Arthur Fiedler. He brought him in to the Boston Pops around 1938. Some of his other great pieces are The Typewriter by, uh, by himself, and Jerry Lewis actually played that in one of his movies. Syncopated clock and trumpeter's lullaby, but here's Sleigh Run. soloists, Sarah on Biron on tenor, and Jim Miller on alto, and also our screen player back there, Kyle, <laughs> who has a wonderful new child. So, awesome. Uh, so, next, we're going to do the Glenn Miller chart that I talked about uh, earlier, Little Brown Jug. Uh, originally recorded in 1939, although the tune goes back to 1869, and there was actually a copyright on it back then. Uh, but he did it in uh, at Carnegie Hall the same year. 
back when all those big bands started showing at the Carnegie Hall and jazz started to get legitimized. Uh, but this arrangement is by a guy, Sammy Nestigo, who was a trombonist that joined up in World War II, became a military arranger, and later a marine band uh, arranger, and that's close to my heart because uh, my wife, who's also playing lead trumpet back there, Jody, we have a son in the Marine Corps, Joshua, who did play in the orchestra here for quite a while. Uh, he cut his teeth here. And uh, anyway, during his tenure, uh, tenure <laughs> he uh, had a composition that he did with the Marine Band uh, at the White House, and it led President Johnson to remark, you call this music? <laughs> anyway, uh, in 2009, Nestico answered, uh, about the interviews that I didn't answer Johnson, although I didn't think Johnson's concept of music was worth a darn. Anyway, he also arranged for Count Basie for many, many years, from the 60s into the mid 80s. Uh, also on his uh, charts are arrangements for Quincy Jones, Phil Collins, Barbara Streisand, uh, Michael Buble, Natalie Cole, Sarah Vaughan, Tony Tennille, Frank Sinatra, and the great Bing Crosby. Uh, some of his uh, TV charts also include Mission Impossible, Mannix, Mash, Charlie's Angel, The Mod Squad. He did commercials for Anheuser-Busch, Zenith, Ford Motor Company, Mattel Toys, Pittsburgh Paint, The National Guard, Dodge, Remington Bank, and Americon. <laughs> anyway, he, he directed some of the programs at Pierce College in Woodland Hills, Westinghouse. He's a local yokel. He died in 2021 at 96. And uh, I have met him at uh, uh, some conferences, and he was a great guy. And I've played many of his arrangements. Here's happily his arrangement of Little Brown Jelly.
Kitty Merry Christmas here. We got one of my personal favorites by Dr. Seuss the Grinch. Uh, always is one of those two, those uh, cartoons I've always loved, and I think it's really beloved by everyone. Uh, Boris Karloff narrated it, and sometimes is mistaken for uh, singing the song. Uh, but in fact, it is uncredited by the famous Thurl's Ravenscroft, who had that big bass voice. Uh, if you don't know the name, you probably know the name Tony the Tiger. Uh, he's best known for that and a lot of Disney attractions, the Haunted Mansion as a singing bus, the Country Bear Jamboree, Mark Twain Riverboat, Pirates of the Caribbean, Disneyland Railroad, and Walt Disney's Enchanted Tiki Room. He started with a big band vocal quartet called the Mellow Man. And uh, also in the Peanuts series, he's known for No Dogs Allowed. Uh, and his lifelong dream was to record the entire Bible on tape. But, he said, James Earl Jones beat him to the punch. Here is The Grinch. memories as kids, at least from my generation, were all the cartoons we played. One of the first ones, actually the first Christmas cartoon that was on national TV was Mr. Magoo, uh, and 
his Christmas carol, which is, it's a short, but it's got a lot of fun music in it. And uh, when I worked for Alfred, we actually published a folio with that stuff in it. Continuing along in the cartoon mode now, though, well, we're not going to play Mr. Magoo, voiced by the famous Jim Backus. We're going to do Charlie Brown Christmas. Uh, Charles Schultz, the lovable character, the uh, lovable loser, Charlie Brown himself. And the music was composed by the Vince Guaraldi Trio back in 1965. Holy cow, that sounds like a long time ago. Uh, anyway, it was recorded at Whitney Studios in Glendale, California, and re-recorded at Fantasy Records in San Francisco with a children's choir from St. Paul's Episcopal Church nearby San Rafael. The sessions ran so late into the night that the children, who were very good, I'm told, were rewarded with ice cream afterwards. And that's a nice treat for that late at night. Uh, and my favorite, of course, voice in all of the peanuts is uh, the uh, trombone. Anybody got a plunger back there in the trombone section? No? Okay. Well, if you're familiar with the cartoon, you know that the teacher's voice is always uh, maybe to buy a trauma on a plunger on wah 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 So we'll, we'll get to that next year. Here is Charlie Brown Christmas.
what a band. Um, just, I love these guys. I'm going to introduce a few of them, and if you can just hold your hand up as I uh, talk to your name. But, but first, we had to fill a couple of pockets, so uh, I'd like them to introduce themselves. John Mark. Donnie. Donnie. Uh, who are sitting in with us tonight because, of course, you know, things happen and you got a band with 16, 18 people in it. It only takes, you know, one COVID or flu or family event that just changes everything. Um, but also, I'd like to introduce some of our folks here in the band who are not only uh, great band members but also supreme soloists as well. And you can hear many of them in the Grace Baptist Orchestra on Sunday mornings. Uh, on alto, we also have uh, Shani, Shani uh, Kennedy, um, we have Jim Miller on alto, and uh, on tenor sax, we also have Sarah Beeron, who teaches at Trinity, and uh, Eugene Kim, and clarinet. Wasn't that a fantastic clarinet song on the uh, opening? What a guy. And Eugene has played here many times as well. And, and it's nice to have believers in, in an orchestra. Uh, all of them are just fabulous. Uh, on trombone, we have our veteran lead player, Lou White. Hold your hand up, Lou. Thanks. Uh, the twin brothers, actually, I don't think they're twins, but you'd think they were. Uh, Daniel and Steve Chandler, you want to hold up your hands there? And, uh, Gary's playing the jazz church night. And then, again, another great veteran on bass drum. Well, we've got Jerry on bass drum. Back in the trumpet section, we have Dave Hanley. And playing the jazz chair and some of the scream stuff, we have uh, Kyle Newman. And then my beloved wife, Joni Malone, who does fantastic job on the way back in the Although she really claims to be a classical player. I think she's got a hidden jazz bug now deep in there. Uh, on the piano, we have Pastor Beckwith's lovely wife, Barbara. <laughs> on bass, upright bass, and I love that sound because it's such a nice sound on the, on the bottom there. It's uh, uh, Ben Harris on the bass, and then... Finally, we've got uh, Mark Converse on drums, who you've probably heard many times in the Grace Orchestra. He really is the glue that brings the orchestra together back there. Um, and finally, finally, uh, we've got our vocalist for tonight, who also sings, and that is uh, Alyssa Butler. Okay. Oh. And so we're going to bring her up here for our next number. I think it's our next number, right? Yeah, uh, I thought it'd be kind of ironic. And thank you. Go, yes, please. <laughs> Always applaud a musician before they play. That way, you won't have to worry about it. If no, no, I'm just kidding, <laughs> she's, gonna, she's gonna be amazing. Um, so yeah, I thought it'd be kind of ironic in the way that sleigh ride was uh, composed during July that we play Summer Wind. I don't think it was originally composed in like. Uh, January or anything, but uh, it was originally in, composed in 1965 and released in Germany as Die Som Sommerwind. Uh, this contrast of winter we're in in summer, uh, we thought uh, we were just in a little bit of go summer, it seems like, uh, but I found it kind of striking. Uh, this is our first vocal of the night, and the most popular recording is our Frank Sinatra. Uh, recording, but uh, we've got Alyssa and she'll be our own Frankie Sinatra tonight. And here it is, Summer Wind. One, two,
did this one last year, but um, we're going to do another vocal, and this one, of course, is back in the Christmas theme. This is Have Yourself a Merry Little Christmas, which is originally from the movie Meet Me in St. Louis by Judy Garland. And she first, the, the song first appeared in a scene where, you know, it's a, it's a pretty basic story. Everybody lives happily ever after, but you don't know that the first time you see it. Uh, it's in a scene in which the family's distraught by the father's plans to move to New York for a job promotion, leaving behind their beloved home in St. Louis, Missouri, just before a long-anticipated 1904 World's Fair begins. By the way, my grandmother was at the 1904 World's Fair, and she actually had one of the first ice cream cones, believe it or not. That's another story from another time. Uh, in the scene, set on Christmas Eve, the incomparable Judy Garland, what a voice, uh, her character, Esther, sings the song to cheer up her despondent five-year-old sister, Judy, played by Margaret O'Brien. So here we go with Have Yourself a Merry Little Christmas.
So we're going to back out of Christmas a little bit here for our last few members. Uh, and it, it, what an excellent vote with was Alyssa. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Big Panther, Henry Mancini, tenor sax player, was the great Plaz Johnson. Uh, Mancini, of course, great composer. Uh, Moon River, Days of Wine and Roses, award winner and tremendous author. author. Here is The Pink Panther. Bands played each other's music. 
Uh, tonight we're going to do a, uh, an arrangement of Tuxedo Junction. That was a number one hit for Miller back in 1940, although he didn't uh, originally play it. The trumpet lick in the original recording was played by uh, band member Johnny Best. But it was really composed in the late 30s with uh, the Hawkins Orchestra, and he was one of the house bands at the Savoy Ballroom. Uh, back in the days when they just threw this stuff together. Uh, they alternated with the Chick Webb Band and often used Tuxedo Junction as their sign-off song before the next band would take the stage so that the dancing would continue uninterrupted. So tonight, with our trumpet soloists and the rest of the band, we're going to play one last big band song and then a Christmas medley to finish it off because, you know, it is Christmas after all, so I guess we have to play some Christmas stuff. <laughs> But uh, here we go with Tuxedo Junction.
and so far the rest. Any missing Christmas we have, we hope that it's covered in this piece. Here's our Big Bang Christmas medley. And you've been a great audience. Thank you so much. Thank <laughs> you.